Good morning, and welcome to Christ the King Parish. Today we celebrate the ascension of our Lord, Jesus Christ, into heaven. Please turn off your cell phones at this time. Today's gospel bears witness to Jesus leaving this earth to be joined with the Father in heaven. But before he did so, he gave the great commission to his disciples, commanding them to proclaim the gospel to every creature so that all might come to faith and be saved through the waters of baptism. As we gather today to contemplate the physical body of Jesus in heaven, we also remember that we, the church, are his mystical body here on earth, nourished by his sacramental body at this holy altar. With the Eucharist as our strength and sustenance, let us worship with joy and reverence and then go forth to carry out the mission that Jesus Christ has given us in the world. If you'd like to follow along with the readings, they may be found at 1094 in your red hymnals. Using the second reading and gospel from cycle B. Our opening hymn will be 529, Hail the Day that Sees Him Rise. Now please join me in praying the Eucharistic Revival Prayer, which may be found at the very front inside of your blue hymnals. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your flesh and blood for the life of the world, and you desire that all people come to the supper of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Renew in your church the truth, beauty, and goodness contained in the most blessed sacrament. Please, me in the Eucharist, come and live in me. Jesus, healing in the Eucharist, come and heal me. Jesus, rising in the Eucharist, come and rise to new life in me. Jesus, loving in the Eucharist, come and love in me. Amen. Ascension into heaven and the promise 
that if we stay close to him during this life, we will follow where he goes. We know, though, that we sometimes fail to fix our sight on the eternal destiny that God desires us for us. We become obsessed with the things here below. And so, for these moments, we ask God's forgiveness and mercy as we begin this celebration. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite in heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak, for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. is known to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God wants his throne to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy, for the Lord the Most High is awesome, the great King over all holy earth. God wants his throne to shouts of joy, a prayer of trumpets for the Lord. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God wants his throne to shouts of joy. A blare of trumpets for the Lord. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. A blare of trumpets for the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, He ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. 
and he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Some believe that the first human being to ever take flight was an Islamic scientist and inventor named Abbas ibn Firnas, living in Cordoba, Spain, all the way back in the 9th century. According to one historian, writing some seven centuries later, he fashioned wings of silk, bamboo, and actual eagle feathers leapt off a cliff and soared for about ten minutes through the air before a rude landing that greatly injured his back. And he never flew again. We can't be sure if this is true or not, given how much time passed before the very first sources that bear witness to it. But we can be sure that in October of 1783, Three men took to the skies. 
Jean-François Pilatre de Rosier, Jean-Baptiste Réveillon, and Giroud de Villette were the first three human beings to take to the air in what sort of machine? What do you imagine? A hot air balloon invented by the Montgolfier brothers. This launch took place in Paris, France. And in December of 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright famously took to the air in the first sustained, controlled, powered, and manned flight in a machine that was heavier than air. The first prototypes of, of modern airplanes, though much smaller, of course, in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. In April of 1961, Yuri Gagarin, of the Soviet Union became the first human being ever to rise beyond the Earth's atmosphere in a spacecraft. And eight years later, Neil Armstrong, of our own country, was famously the first to set foot on the moon. Many ambitious, ambitious and brilliant minds throughout human history have sought to ascend to physically rise up beyond what was thought humanly possible, to defy gravity, or to borrow a famous phrase from Star Trek, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Yet today we celebrate an, an ascension of a human being that happened before all of these and is even yet more marvelous than any of the ones I just described. About 2,000 years ago, in Jerusalem, and the takeoff point was the Mount of Olives. Forty days after the already amazing and miraculous feat of rising from the dead, Jesus himself rose up from the earth to take his rightful place in heaven. From one way of looking at it, this was simply the Divine Son, the second person of the Trinity, returning from whence he came to the Father's right hand, that place of glory and divine life in which he had existed for all eternity, even before the world was made. And Paul reminds us of this in his letter to the Ephesians. when he says, What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended into the lower regions of earth? Think of it as God's law of gravity working in reverse. What came down must go back up. Only something was different when the Son returns to God the Father. Something is new because now he takes with him a human body and soul. He returns to the Father not simply as the divine word, but as the word made flesh as a human person, Jesus of Nazareth. So in Jesus' ascension, in a very, very radical way, it is true that our humanity boldly went where no human being has gone before. Now, I keep using the language of directional movement, upward, to describe the ascension of Jesus. But language is limited here. Because this event was so much more than a physical ascension. Yes, the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospels do relate that what the disciples witnessed with their very eyes was a physical movement of Jesus' body being lifted upward and then disappearing within a cloud. But this is just a sign to make comprehensible for us a deeper spiritual reality of what was going on when Jesus left the earth 40 days after his resurrection. Bishop Bob Barron in a homily on this day last year put it this way, Jesus' ascension is him being translated into a higher pitch of existence. As though he's lifted up into another dimension of reality, totally transcendent, in fact, of the dimensions of space and time which we inhabit, a divine dimension. 
existence beyond our physical known world. The disappearance into the cloud described in the Acts of the Apostles helps disclose this mystery to us, I think, when we think about how in the Old Testament the appearance of a great cloud was often a sign of the great mystery of God's divine presence. In his ascension, Jesus and his humanity, which is our humanity, is being enfolded fully into God's divine life. And because Jesus is both Son of God and Son of Man, having taken all of sinful flesh to himself, that means that his ascension truly does hold the promise that where he is going, we too shall follow. This is what follows from the mystery of the Incarnation when Jesus took on our flesh. That what happens to Jesus' body happens to our bodies also, provided that we allow ourselves to be united with his mystical body here on earth. One last thing about Jesus' ascension. We might be fooled into thinking that because Jesus ascended and went up to heaven, the end of his time on earth, that that means he is now farther away from us than he was, more distant. When he walked this earth, we might think he was as close to us as he could be. Wouldn't it have been lovely to live in that time? But now he's gone away. And perhaps that even was what the disciples were thinking too, as they stared dumbfounded into the sky after him. Well, he's gone. What do we do now? But two angels appeared to them real quickly to snap them right out of that notion. He's not gone, and in any event, he will return. Because Jesus' ascension has taken him into that higher pitch of existence, That allows him to be even more present to us. St. Paul said it well when he said, through Jesus' ascension into heaven, he is able to fill all things. So he is able to be present to us across time and space, in the sacraments, for instance. And as we receive him in the, the Holy Eucharist especially, present to us in the ways that his Holy Spirit works and moves within us. And just look at the kinds of things that those same disciples who were gawking into the sky like a bunch of people waiting for an eclipse to happen. Look look what they did afterward. They were driving out demons, speaking new languages, without any training. They were miraculously surviving deadly encounters with serpents and the like and restoring the sick to health by laying their hands upon them. And with an untold zeal and a vigorous energy, they preached. They set themselves to work. And Mark writes that the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Lord worked with them. He's not God. He's not far from us. But from his place in heaven, at the Father's right hand, he fills all things. With his spirit, he fills our lives and allows us to continue his work here. May we have the grace to trust and hope that where he has gone, we may follow and also to realize his presence here and now within us.
Let us stand if that's our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Let us now offer our prayers to God for the needs of the church and the world. For our church throughout the world, that we may bear faithful witness to Christ's love, so that others may come to believe in his saving power, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in our world. We pray especially for an end to the wars in the Middle East and in Ukraine, and the violence in Darfur. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the safety of all those working on our construction project, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For our mothers and mother figures who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For mothers who have lost a child through death, and their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the eighth grade students of Christ the King, as they prepare for their service immersion trip in Indianapolis this coming week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all our beloved dead, especially among our parishioners and loved ones, for their eternal rest in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions we bring with us to this Mass, in a special way, we pray for all the mothers of Christ the King for whom Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, we ask you to fill all things with your grace. And help us to build up your body here on earth as we await your second coming. For you live and reign with the Father Almighty in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing in the Red Funeral, number 503. I hear my glory, let us sing. I am zero.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication to the Lord to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. We offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the mothers of Christ the King, perish. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, Placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protective help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal cup, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their comfort, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mystery, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First, Vacation Bible School registration is still open, but only for a little over 24 more hours. Uh, the deadline is tomorrow. So hurry and register your children ages 4 through rising 4th graders today. QR codes are found in the bulletin, um, and posters by the entrance, as well as um, a link in the upcoming parish email. Second, uh, after Mass at the main entrance, uh, door 16, the Cub Scouts will be selling carnations for Mother's Day. They are a dollar piece, while supplies last, and benefits go to the Michiana Right to Life. Our St. Vincent de Paul Society will host their monthly meeting this Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m. in the Father Trippy Room. All are welcome. We are excited to welcome the Director of Crisis Services at Oaklawn as the guest speaker for this meeting. More details can be found by uh, contacting the email address given in the bulletin. Also, for the first time, Christ the King will have a Eucharistic procession on the Solemnity of Corpus Christi, June 2nd, from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We will process down the streets and around the parish with the Holy Eucharist. We will need some volunteers to help coordinate this, so please mark the date, June 2nd, in your calendars, and contact Deacon Joe if you would like to be more involved as a volunteer. And finally, I would like to ask all of our mothers and those women in the community who act as mother figures to anyone else in their lives to stand up for a blessing on this Mother's Day. O oh, loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women of our parish. By your Holy Spirit, they bear fruit in many and varied ways, as both our spiritual mothers and physical mothers. Bless them in their motherhood. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Give them patience and compassion. Console them in their grief and strengthen them in difficulty. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, everyone stand up, please, for the final lesson. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks. Thanks to God. Please join us in the Bible 32 of the original Go to the World of the Bible. 